amazing. You guys sure dream big. I still don't get it. Yeah, me neither. A map of a bunch of places nobody cares about? Big deal. Well, regardless, if we're going to find anything in the vast waters, we'll need a lot of luck. We'd like to borrow some of yours. And just how do you plan on doing that? I want you to use your gut instincts to tell us where to look. In exchange, the Von Eltia will be at your service. And you can keep anything we find in our explorations. You'll be able to assign us new orders from any location by using a kind of messenger bird called a Sylph Jay. Who knows? We might even come across some good treasure. Or maybe some rare food. Or brand new recipes. Hmm. That's a lot of treasure you could find. Doesn't sound bad to me. It won't take much of our time, and besides, it could be interesting. You're right. Okay, as long as I'm not responsible for how things turn out, I guess I can help. All right, then I'll tell you what you need to know. Scout ship setting sail. Take a look at this. So now we just wait for news. Who knows what we'll find? A sunken ship full of treasure, maybe? Underwater ruins? Desert islands? New shipping lanes, perhaps. Some fish would be enough for me. Especially if they sell well. My thoughts exactly! Tuna or yellowtail or sturgeon! Don't blame me if... Wind's kicking, and the tide's flowing, and we're stuck here. Then why not just set sail? Not going to happen. The Abbey hasn't given us permission yet. And we would need their permission, why? The Kingdom keeps a strict watch on harbors and sea routes. It's like they've erected walls and gates in the sea. Aha! Midgand is spread across a number of islands. The sea is the only way to get from one place to another. If they can control the ships, they can control the flow of people, goods, and even information. Exactly. They even created that fortress, Vortigern, to help them do just that. It's restrictive, but it's also necessary. Demons are out at sea too, and exorcists are the only ones who can stand against them. Even still, it rubs me the wrong way. A sea dog obeys nothing but the winds and the waves. Crabs are amazing, right? Oh yeah! They're delicious, boiled or grilled! Even their innards are yummy! And five sets of legs, that's so many! That's all true, but what really makes them amazing is their miraculous ability to regenerate. They can detach their own legs when a predator attacks, which lets them get away. It's called autotomy. And then, not long after they detach their leg, a new one grows from the stump. Really? So you're saying we need to catch lots of crabs, then scare them so they detach their own legs? That's exactly what I'm saying, bro. We can harvest as much as we like. No one's thought of this before. We're geniuses. Huh. I never knew that. I thought only lizards could regrow a lost body part, and only their tails. Lizards? 
Do you think Dial's tail can grow back? If it does, we can make a killing by selling Dial tails. Would they be... tasty? No idea. Ugh, no way. Sir, scouts have reported seeing a powerful demon. Its danger level has been classified as Code Red. Understood. I'll notify the Abbey we have a Code Red demon in our midst. Send out an emergency alert to the neighboring areas. Right! With wild demons this close to the capital, the Abbey must have had its hands full. Aizen, what did he mean by a Code Red demon? It's like a most wanted list for demons. From the latest I've heard, there's around 10 such demons across the territories. Oh, they sound pretty tough. That would be putting it lightly. Suffice it to say, you wouldn't want to face one unprepared. Then we'd best be prepared. Let's get going. While we're wasting time here, the Abbey is digging in. Wait, you're coming too? You said you heard about Eifried on the prison island, right? I heard an exorcist legate named Melchior took him away. I don't know anything beyond that. Neither do I. What about you, Mogilu? Word is he was taken away about a year ago. Caused quite a stir if I remember right. Everything about him was kept a tight secret. No one even knew what cell he was in. Eifried is an ordinary human, right? Yeah. He doesn't have the abilities of an exorcist. And he isn't a demon either. Weird. I mean, if they were just trying to bust up his gang, why capture him but leave the crew free? If not his gang, what business does the Abbey have with him then? We've cast our nets wide and can't come up with any explanation. We'll free him though. His place is on the sea with us. And you're convinced he's still alive? They wouldn't have any problems killing a pirate who caused them trouble. If the Abbey took him alive and for questioning, it means he has something they really want. But he isn't the type to change his ways, or bend his knee on anyone's orders. He holds his own tiller. Precisely. Here I come! Just cross! Perfect mayhem! That's all! 
your style is really unique. Just wait until I pull out the good stuff. Walls. They're so huge. That's Logris, the capital of the Empire. They keep demons out by enclosing the city within a great wall. Humanity has achieved great things on the backs of slave Malakim. Why the surprise, Lafayette? said. You've been here before, right? I have. But back then, I was not who I am now. I see. Tethered Malakim aren't even allowed the freedom to observe their surroundings. We'll soon lose such freedom ourselves. Huh? We've reached the heart of the Empire, and of the Abbey. Soldiers and exorcists are stationed all around. This is no place for a collection of villains like us. I'm not looking for a place. All I need to find is Artorias. That's it. Oh, is ready to fight. Yeah. An inspection. They won't inspect everyone. Just act natural. Your face is all stiff. I know. You, in the black coat. Show me your documentation. Uh, um... Well? Your travel permit from the Abbey? Where is it? <laughs> Foolish girl! How many times have I told you? A magician's apprentice must wear a pleasant grin. Magician? Verily! I present to you the traveling troupe of mischievous misfits known across the land as... Magilou's Menagerie! Entertainment for the ceremony? Why, yes, indeed we are, my dear. Please pardon my uncouth apprentice. Girl, allay the good man's fears and show him the dove trick you've spent all these weeks on. Go to! Huh? Oh, uh, sorry, mistress. 
I forgot to prepare. Y you, you pathetic little shirker! A proper performer is perpetually prepared! It's fine. Doves flying around would be a nuisance. No, this will not do. If you cannot summon a dove, then act like one! Act like a dove! Coo coo. Ties here! Move along! As you say! <laughs> that was a fine ploy, Mogilu. Well, don't expect tricks like that every day. Coo coo. <laughs> oh, that murderous gaze! Coo coo! Those doves were amazing! Just a crude trick. If anything, it just shows the Capitol's defenses are pathetic. More like it shows how much confidence they have in those defenses. How many soldiers are here, Lafayette? The number of exorcists in the Capitol? At least a thousand. And two divisions of guards. I'd expect no less from the Capitol. They're not careless. They're covered. We need transit documents. See how the citizens smile? To think they were fleeing from demons just a few years ago. To hold an observance of this scale shows just how much peace their power has brought. A peace paid for with Luffy's Velvet? Right now, Prince Percival is the one ruling Midgand. He's the Crown Prince. The Crown Prince? What happened to the king? The king is in good health, but he's decided to withdraw from public life and leave the kingdom to Prince Percival. He declared that a new way of thinking was needed to save the world from this crisis. <laughs> this king sounds like quite the guy. Prince Percival is incredible too. He's following in the footsteps of the king by working hand in hand with Lord Artorius in the Abbey. As long as we have Lord Artorius and Prince Percival, the future of Midgand is bright. Ask anyone. <laughs> Got it. So all of Midgand is on Artorius' side. Abby's job is getting harder and harder. We've all got to give them our full support. Uh, let's backtrack a bit. Just what sort of organization is this, Abby? You're kidding me. How do you not even know that? The Abbey is part of Midgan's Church of the Empyreans. Originally, it was an order of paladins and warrior priests devoted to exorcising evil. Yeah. The Abbey's official name is the Exorcist Abbey of the Church of Midgan. Nowadays, its members are all called exorcists. I'm impressed. You've done your research. So basically, they're just one branch of the church, right? And for a side branch, they don't really strike me as humble. Of course not. The High Priest entrusted all his power to the Abbey's leader, Lord Artorius. He's effectively retired. So the Abbey's leader is at the top of the entire church. That's not all. The Prince also gave Lord Artorius authority over all military and government affairs during the crisis. Lord Artorius commands Midgan now, and has formed a new theocracy to combat the demon blight. And that is the origin of the Holy Midgan Empire. The Abbey is its foundation, and its ray of hope. Well, wow, okay, got it. The Abbey's a big deal.
Those cheers. The royals sure have these folks in line. Subjects, may I have your attention? It is I, Percival Asgard, Crown Prince of the Midgand Empire. His Majesty, my father, and I are pleased to celebrate with you on this auspicious day. The ceremony started. It will be impossible to slip in now. After the opening, Ten years ago, our kingdom faced an existential threat, both from demons and the terrible spread of demon light. However, one man raised a miraculous sword and stood so that the body and soul of the land Over there. would not be you lost. You can climb up if you want, but attacking now would and be suicide. And the name of that man was Artorius <laughs> Colbrand! Trust are unfamiliar with Artorius's noble act. <laughs> to bring us salvation from demons, he sacrificed everything. But he's a murderer. He called Lord Inovinat, one of the five Imperians, and blessed us with the strength of the Malachi. But he's a murderer! Velvet! <laughs> he serves as a shining beacon of reason in this world of turmoil. And reason is what binds us. But you killed him. You took everything that I loved. So raise your voices in praise to Artorius's devoted work. To the Savior who purifies evil and guides our flock. Let us call him our shepherd. Shepherd Artorius. Shepherd Even though the world was filled with suffering, I had to ask something tremendous of you all. I entrusted you to endure the pains of reason. I asked you to bind yourselves with shackles of your own will. For the only blade that can expel calamity is one forged from unshaking reason and the iron will to do what must be done. And now that very blade stands ready before all of us today. I offer my body and my life in service to the people of this great land. With the blessings of the Empyrean Innominat, I will guide you to a world without calamity. And this world's suffering will be nothing but a distant memory!
that you're the one who murdered. Fool, they'll see us. You're the one who killed Lafayette. What? The Shepherd Artorius. That's who you're after? Oh, and here I was hoping you'd just straight up pounce on him. That would be certain death. No, I need a sword of reason and will. That's the only thing that can kill him. Killing Lord Artorius. Playing it safe? Boring! Regrettably, it is at this juncture we go our separate ways. I've got a bit of hunting to do. No one's stopping you. Goodbye. Farewell! May your days be fruitful and your nights tormented! If our enemy's calling himself a shepherd, he won't be going into hiding. Let's take this slowly. The old man behind him. Melchior, I take it? Yeah. Let's gather information on these people. If we know what they're planning, we can find a weakness. They're the most powerful men in the land. If we're going to look into them, we need a lead first. Aizen, do you have any underworld contacts in the capital itself? Like your friend at the port? I don't go inland much, I'm afraid. But Eifried has close ties to a shadow guild. A tavern in the city, run by an old man called Baskerville, serves as a front for them. A shadow guild? Those sorts of things actually exist? Ugh. <laughs> that settles it. Let's head to that tavern. They'll have food, I'm sure. Why not? My stomach made a weird noise. That's another sign that you're alive. What'll it be? Some food for the boy. Mabo curry is our specialty. It takes a week to stew properly. Mabo curry? Some of that, then. Say, do you know a man named Baskerville? I heard we might find him here. That old man? A scoundrel and criminal who went against the rules of the Abbey. They executed him long ago. Oh. This Mabo curry is amazing. You get along so well. Is he your brother? No. No, he wouldn't be, would he? After all, your brother was murdered before your eyes. How do you know that? The shadows watch those who flinch from the light. So the guild is still active, even after Baskerville's arrest? That's right. Just like how Eifried's crew continues their piracy, even without their captain. So you're the contact? What may I help you with? I want to know what Artorius is planning. Information such as that? It won't come cheap. I have here a list of jobs, not one remotely legal. Take care of all of them, and I'll tell you what you want to know. Take this with you as documentation. It's fake, but it's a good fake. It'll hold up to inspection. It's registered to Mogulu's Menagerie. Oh? Was that not the name you gave to the guard at the gate? <laughs> I can see you're a group to be reckoned with. 
Report back here once you're finished. However, be aware that should you fail... Then this conversation never took place. Got it. I'll cause you no trouble. I appreciate your understanding. You're welcome to stay the night, free of charge. Forget about work until the morning comes. Right. You're missing Captain Eifried. The Captain has done much toward our viability. I promise that I'll share anything I hear about him for no charge. Thanks. All we know is there was a pendulum on the ground at the last place he was seen. And that Legget Melchior is connected to the Captain's disappearance. How? We don't know. Sounds like you've got problems of your own. Do you really have time to take on ours as well? I could ask you why you've tied yourself up with Velvet. Me? I've got a debt to repay. Without her, there's no way I'd have ever found my blade again. A demon repaying a debt? Ridiculous. As ridiculous as a pirate Moloch, you think? Hmm. No matter how you look at it, there's nothing reasonable about our rogue existence. And in this brave new world governed by reason, a rogue can either rage and become a monster like me, or... Or band together with others. Like a ship full of pirates, perhaps. Exactly. I admire Velvet's courage, squaring off against the whole world on her own. If you can accomplish that, it takes strength real strength, and I'm curious where it comes from. So you're doing it for yourself after all? Is that so wrong? <sighs> no. I'm the same. I need allies on my side, with the strength and courage to combat this so-called order imposed by the Abbey. But anyone who's willing to put up with the creed folly of Eifried's pirates, <laughs> has to be an even bigger fool than we are. So I'm like you. I want to know how deep her foolishness goes. She'd kill you if she heard that, you know. It's a compliment. Fools that big aren't born every day. Aha. Uh -huh. And I imagine your dear Captain Eifried's much the same. Aye. That man flies his full flag proudly. Shepherd Artorius, hmm? He's got the populace eating from the palm of his hand. I wonder... Hmm... Just how deeply will the fangs of our would-be tragic heroines scar this broken world of ours? I've got a traitor to find, but in the meantime, this should be a good show. to ambush the Royal Medical Society on the Danan Highway. The Royal Medical Society is a group of doctors that travel around healing the sick. They're funded by donations given by ordinary folk. Hmm. Why would anyone attack them? Don't ask me. Some people are just twisted. 
And why would an underworld group defend them? Who knows? Something to do with the attackers, perhaps? Scout ship settings. Greetings, Maggie Lou's Menagerie. You've come to exactly the right place. You must be a Bloodwing. What do you want? You already know about the Code Red demons, right? The really strong demons the Abbey wants gone? Yeah. Would you ever consider hunting them down for us? We'll reward you properly. Reward? Why pay us when the Abbey would do it for free? It's complicated. The Abbey is calculating in their deployments, especially where Code Red demons are concerned. I get it. They'll only act if they determine the demon would cause more harm than the losses they'd incur in battling it. That does seem logical. But sometimes, people have lost a loved one to such a demon. Or sometimes, they have a connection to the person the demon used to be. Wherever there's a code red demon, you can bet there are people willing to pay good money to have it killed. <sighs> and let me guess, that's where the blood wings come in. Exactly. There are blood wings all throughout Midgant who have information on these code red demons. If you defeat a demon and report back to my comrades, they'll make sure you're well compensated. All right, I understand. But I won't make any promises. That's fine. No sense in drawing up a contract when the hunter probably won't survive anyway. If you get results, let us know. We'll hold up our end. That being said, I'd feel guilty if I didn't help out at least a little, so... Here, take this. Those blood wings are definitely a rough crowd. To be fair, Things are never that straightforward when you're dealing with demons. All that matters is that there's something in it for us if we hunt those Code Red demons. The only thing better than fighting formidable foes is getting paid for it. Just remember that these Code Red demons are tough enough to make the Abbey shiver. We'd be wise not to underestimate them. We should talk to those Bloodwings before considering any of the marks. They might have information that will help us prepare. Yeah, and we better remember to upgrade our equipment. Right.
of our way. That's fair. That's our food! Give it up! It's ours! So the attackers were demons. I guess that's why they needed us to stop the attack. The doctors? Looks like they ran off. It appears they were after this stuff. Medicine with the cathedral seal. That scarf, did that belong to the attackers? Yeah. All three were wearing them. Does it mean something? They were just demons. Aggressive ones who attacked the innocent. The job is done. Time to leave. You're good at what you do. I'm impressed. There's still more to do. I'm sure it'll be easy for you. A scholar missing on the road to Gallus Lake. Strange request. If they know where he vanished, why don't they just look for him there? Exactly. And what's so illegal about a missing persons case that you gotta go to the underworld? I can think of a few possibilities, but our job isn't to ask questions.
Hey, that noisy demon looks pretty strong. Think it might be one of those Code Red demons? Doesn't matter to me. I'd rather not waste my time fighting it if I don't need to. I don't see it as a waste of time. Look, the Abbey only has a handful of exorcists strong enough to take something like this down, right? Probably. I'd say Praetors like Lady Teresa and the Legates could probably take it on. And those guys are all your enemies, right? I see where you're going with this. The Abbey is strong, both in its individual members and as an organization. And if we're to close the gap between us and them, we need to fight strong opponents like this demon. That's what I would do. But you're free to make your own decision. All right. I'll concede the point. But we should determine just how strong it is first. I don't want us to bite off more than we can chew. That goes without saying. I'd rather not get myself killed due to inadequate preparation. You don't have to worry that much. If you want to go fight, I'll help keep you safe myself. I promise. I don't recall asking for your protection. You don't need to. Deadly weapons. Huh. What'll it take to make you go all out?
Who's there? What on earth are guards doing here? Watch out! They've got more with you! They're no ordinary cell they were guarding a little lost lamb perhaps you think they're holding mendy captive Is there someone here named Mendy? We've come to help. Oh, thank goodness. I can finally go home. So they were keeping you prisoner. They made you mine vermilion ore? Yes, I discovered a method of refining it, and it cost me dearly. What's vermilion ore? A rare stone made of concentrated nutrients. It can be used in medicine, but it's also poisonous. Correct. So you were making medicine? Yes. They were forcing me to make a nutritional substance called nectar. Isn't vermilion ore supposed to be highly addictive? I, I told them that. But what choice did I have? Whatever. Our task is complete. Can you get back to Logris on your own? I can. I'm terribly sorry. Why apologize to me? We've done what we came for. Let's get back to the old lady.
Scout. I hear Mendy made it back safe. That takes care of that problem. Keep up the good work. Destroying red crates in a warehouse? Doesn't sound very nice. Have we ever been nice? <laughs> I suppose not. This is a contract job, so let's keep costs down. I'll call the Von Eltia and have her draw the guards away. If you would. What will we be destroying? Who knows? That's hardly our concern. us through the darkness. What an appropriate title for Lord Artorius. I believe in him. As long as we have Shepherd Artorius, we'll make it through this era of disaster. Shepherd Artorius? How pompous can you get? Artorius has already seized control of all religious and secular power in Midgand. But now that he's taken on this new title, he's no longer just an authority figure. He's become the very hope of the masses. A dangerous opponent, indeed. After seeing that, will you still fight him? Of course I will. He could be a god for all I care. I'll have my vengeance. No matter what. Let's go! I'm set! Let's go! 
I refuse to fall here. Whew. That thing was pretty strong. You just wanted something good to train on. I'm not in it just for myself. If I get stronger, I'll be more helpful in your battles. This counts towards the repayment of my debt. But you don't deny at least part of it was for yourself. Of course not. Every true swordsman wants to train so they can improve themselves. It might be a little late to ask, but what debt exactly are you repaying, Rokuro? My sword is my life. When I was separated from it, Velvet told me where to find it. Also, she broke me free from a 500-year-long prison sentence. You say that like it's an afterthought. And that's why I can't fully trust you. I don't follow. Us Rangetsu men are renowned for our sense of duty and commitment. Actually, now that you mention it, Rangetsu's a pretty unusual last name. I heard your family specializes in unconventional swords and fighting styles. That's true. Our ancestor was a swordsman from way off in another country who came to this land a long time ago. A foreign swordsman, huh? I guess that explains why your swords and techniques stand out so much. He had quite a hard time getting by in this unusual land, until he was taken in by an aristocratic family. Ever since, the Rangetsu clan has accepted the rule of their benefactors and has served them in repayment of their debt. Served them as bodyguards? Bodyguards, assassins, spies, body doubles. Whatever the order, your family will carry it through. Always return that which you've borrowed even if you must repay it with your life. That was our ancestors' creed. In truth, four of my five older brothers are dead. You have to admit, we take our sense of duty seriously. Yeah. All right, I get it. You and your family are all tied to your sense of honor. That seems to be the case. We can count on him. As long as he's on our side, at least. Oh, come on, that's not fair. All right, the guards are gone. Let's move in. Benwick and the crew did a fine job. Red crates. These must be our targets. The seal of Midgand Cathedral? Should we look inside? There's no need. Burn them, Lafayette. Okay. We're done here. Let's go. That storm cost too much time. I must report to Lord Artorius as soon as possible. <gasps> it's you! Oh, hey. The crybaby. Eleanor Hume! Get away from this time! You really wanna fight, don't you? <laughs> Let's go! 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 Let's go!
Willing to fight without your Malachine? No! You set the storehouse ablaze?! The people have worked so hard to withstand this time of crisis! How can you destroy what they have so painstakingly built?! Because I'm not human. You'll pay for this, you demon! More Malakim up her sleeves! I will protect you, Madam Eleanor! Come and face me now, demon! He's adorable. Uh, am I? Ooh, I found you at last! That bad, bad voice! Fu, you traitor! You'll never leave my clutches again! Not her! No! What are you doing? Get out there and fight! Hey, look! Is that smoke? It is! Fire! The fire has spread enough. Let's get going. You're coming with us. Let me go! Witch nippers! Madam Exorcist! What happened? Oh, you're badly hurt. I can wait. Gather the people and put out that fire. Yes, madam. Tell me, do you know what was being kept in that warehouse? Um, mostly nectar, I believe. Vast stores of the medicine provided by High Priest Gideon to be distributed to doctors across the land. Medicine given by the church? Why would anybody destroy it? Whew. Looks like we're in the clear. <laughs> Misfortune and anguish! I had that little turncoat right in front of me! Well, at least now I know where to find him! That weird little Moloch was the one you were looking for? The very same. The Moloch Bienfu! A creature of unfathomable wickedness and beguiling cuteness who broke the heart of this wretched maiden! <laughs> Once I finally catch him, who knows what I'll be capable of? Not sure I get it. Me neither. Good. Pray that you never do. We finished all the jobs. Let's get back to the old lady's tavern. <laughs> You sure do like that Mabo curry. Uh, do I? Don't ask me. You didn't think it was tasty, Velvet? Couldn't tell you. Huh? Food doesn't hold any flavor for her. According to Velvet, she can never feel sated, and the only thing she can taste is blood. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> 